my dear students uh, this is md rajaul islam today we wants to discuss about the interaction and conserving the environment from lesson 13.5.2 to 13.6 from chapter 13 environment around life so dear students let's start first of all uh, interaction and interdependence Green plants are generally called self-dependent -de because they are autotrophic. If it is considered from environmental point of view, it can be said that no organism is self-dependent, even the green plants. Plants, birds and animals, worms and insects and other organisms influence each other. A flowering plant depends on worms and insects for its cross-pollination and on other birds and animals for the dispersal of seeds. For photosynthesis, the green plants use the carbon dioxide that is released by animals during respiration. Conversely, animals use the gas oxygen released by plants at daytime. Moreover, bacteria, fungi and different microorganisms in different ways affect the plants animals, worms, and insects. The mutual assembly and dependence are the key to the regulation of the activities of life. So, in the living world, existing organic relationships between plants and animals can be designated with the term symbiosis. In another word, we can say what is symbiosis. It is a close association. It is an interaction in which the two organisms are associated closely and uh, benefited from each other, it is called symbiosis. The action uh, reaction that occur in between the symbiotic organism are called interaction. So what is interaction, action, reaction that occur in between the symbiotic organism, it is called interaction. Environmental scientist uh, E.P. Odom says that this interdependent relationship can be in two ways, such as number one by positive interaction and then number two by negative interaction. So first of all, it is about uh, positive interaction. In the interrelationship in which the two organisms help each other, it is called positive interaction. Two organisms helps each other and that interaction it is positive interaction in the symbiotic organisms one or both may be benefited this beneficial interaction can be grouped further into two categories namely number one mutualism and then number two it is commensalism first of all mutualism the relationship is mutualism when relationship is mutualism when in the association both the organisms become benefited and such type of interaction this is mutualism bee fly worm and insects etc fly around from flower to flower to attain the nectar and as a result the pollination is accomplished many birds and bats live on eating fruits and they release seeds uh, with their stools. This way, seeds are transferred and the distribution of plants is done. This seed helps to develop a new plant. The association of an algae and a fungus form lichen. The fungus collects water vapor from the air and mineral salts to use for both of them, both of the fungi and algae. On the other side, the algae by its chlorophyll produce food carbohydrates for itself and also for the fungus. The bacteria rhizobium residing at the roots of leguminous plants form the nodules. Fix atmospheric nitrogen in them, fix atmospheric nitrogen inside the nodules. They supply this fixed nitrogen to the host leguminous plant for example, bean plant, and in return, it collect their food carbohydrates from it. 
look at here this is uh, the diagram of uh, mutualism and a specific example the formation of nodule the rhizobium bacteria reside at the root of the leguminous plant and from a gall like or ball like or round shaped structure it is called nodule this is the transverse section of nodule and in this transverse section this is the root inside the nodule this is the rhizobium bacteria and this rhizobium bacteria can fix the atmospheric nitrogen the plant absorbs this nitrogen adds its uh, macronutrients from this uh, nodule and on the other hand the rhizobium bacteria it uh, takes the shelter from the root of the plants and then uh, next uh, introduction it is commensalisms uh, what is commensalisms in this association only one gets benefited though the other associate is not benefited but it doesn't lose or loss anything for example a creeper plant with its root is anchored in the soil and creeps up around a big tree this way it collects sufficient amount of light by spreading on other plant woody creeper doesn't depend on the plant that is providing shelter for it for food and doesn't do any harm to it epiphytic plant collect food from the air but do not do any harm to the plant providing shelter some algae dwell in the bodies of other plants but don't do any harm to them so these are the example of commensalism creeper plant epiphytic plant some algae these are the example of commensalism look at here this is the epiphyte uh, this is the creeper plant uh, and this is epiphytic uh, plant orchid then next uh, number 2 it is a negative interaction in this case the relationship is detrimental to one or to the both negative interaction can be grouped into three categories such as number one exploit exploitation in this case an organism enjoys its rights by deceiving directly or indirectly another organism from its rights for example a dodar plant shornolata plant a dodar plant with the help of absorbing structure hosteria what is hosteria hosteria it is a special type of structure that found in the dodar plant through which or by which the dodar plant absorb nutrients from the host body so a dodar that is the shornolata plant uh, with the help of the absorbing structure hosteria collects food from the plant which has provided it with shelter a cuckoo can never be able to build a nest it lays its eggs in the nest of the crow and the crow hatches its eggs and once the embryo of cuckoo comes out of the egg being sufficiently grown up by breaking the shell of the egg so the example of negative interaction it is dodar plant uh, a cuckoo etc this is a dodar plant shornolata plant this shornolata plant for example if this is the shornolata plant this shornolata dodar plant uh, it uh, uh, it form a special structure namely hosteria and by entering the hosteria inside the stem of the plant's body it collects the nutrition from the from this uh, host plant stem antibiosis uh, this is another negative interaction antibiosis if the growth and development of any organism if the growth and development of any organism is partly or fully interrupted by the biochemical substances produced by other organism or even the organism may die then this process is called antibiosis this question is important for you dear students what do you mean by antibiosis so it from the uh, it becomes clear from the discussion made above those actions and reactions are continuously occurring in between the organisms existing in an environment and every component is interrelated to each other by this relationship some are becoming benefited and some are harmed this way they are maintaining the balance of the environment 
then our next topic it is about the significance of conserving the environment it is essential to conserve the environment to maintain the habitable condition for the organisms living on our planet the earth there are innumerable number of organisms on the earth and for their survival there are different substances such as soil water and air etc all these natural components are being damaged to meet the different types of demands such as food clothes dwelling place and health care for the excessive population of the present world in this catastrophic situation if people don't become mass conscious of it catastrophe will turn into a more serious state in our environment from the smallest plants worms and insects to the large animals and plants none is unexpected or valueless in the realm of nature all the organisms and the inanimate substances are each other tied closer the biodiversity is formed with millions of species of plants worms and insects birds animals and human etc and the existence and well-being of human race are based on it forest hill water reservoir sea are the very essential harbors of biodiversity so biodiversity will be sustained if the environment is well conserved if the environment is well conserved the basic demands of humans such as food clothes dwelling place medicine fuel water etc will be continuously fulfilled without any disruption if the environment especially the forest are degraded the rate of rainfall is reduced and the cultivation of crops is hampered the temperature is raised for the increasing amount of greenhouse gases for example carbon dioxide carbon monoxide nitrous oxide etc and it is called enhanced greenhouse effect for the enhanced greenhouse effect sea level will rise and consequently vast coastal areas will be inundated weather will be changed forest will be damaged crops will be destroyed by different pests and the severity of storm and tornado will rise if the environment is well conserved it will be possible to be safe from enhanced greenhouse effect it is essential to conserve the biodiversity for the sustenance of healthy environment and with this view all the plant and animal species which are on the verge of the extinctions from the nature should be conserved by special processes and this is why from now on all the best measures should be taken to conserve the environment and this is about the significance of conserving the environment dear boys and girls after completing all the topics a homework for you and the homework is explain the different methods of conserving of environment dear boys and girls to complete this homework and be fine everybody